the emptiness, it's not dead, it's filled with love. So when you're with your kids and you're feeling that thing, it's not the kids that are generating it. It's that in that connection, you're opening up to what you actually are. Meaning that in fact, the whole point of letting go of preference is the more you let go of preference- The more you have that. Yes. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Welcome everybody to Dr. Drew After Dark. Phone number 818 for those voice messages. And of course, these emails at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. We appreciate you supporting the show. We appreciate the support the people that support the show. So keep, keep, uh, Use all those good uh, products that we try to carefully select. Today, the guest, Duncan Trussell. Hi, how hey, you doing? Man. Use offer code DTFH. You don't have to use their offer code. <laughs> no, use my offer code, please. Uh, but so you have monkeypox and COVID, you were telling me? Just, just for the a mic little. Heater. It's not that bad. The monkeypox, not bad. Yeah, can, you I, know, can I touch it and get it? Just get it over with? Oh, yeah, like, like, that's not like where it's not on my hand. Oh, it's on your dick? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but you can definitely touch it if you want to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Oh, so Duncan and I are friends from way back. Do you guys know, has Duncan been on this show? He did it in Recito years ago, right? I believe so. I did your I show said. a long this time show. ago, yes. And we watched, back when we were, the first incarnation, we were watching some videos and stuff, right? I don't remember. I don't remember I, either. It's a <laughs> murky, watery, all of my memories are kind of murky. What is all. that, man? I, I that, think it's age. It is, and it drives me fucking crazy. Yeah. So I remember when I was about 45, I was interviewing a neuroscientist and he was, I forget why I was talking to him, great. But he was saying that most people as they age complain about memory, but what they're really complaining about is two things. Name finding. Yeah. Like na- finding names. I gave up. I gave up 10 years ago Terrible. on that. And working memory, which is the ability to keep something in mind while you're doing something else. Yes. Like, you know, we'll be talking and I want, oh, I remember to bring this up to Junkin. Gone, right, gone, gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone with the wind, baby. And now you're in parenting stupor too. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, you really are a doctor, mm-hmm. aren't you? And a parent. I've he, been there. Here's what I did last night. Here was my big dumb plan. <laughs> so, uh, Aaron goes to bed, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna tell f- them how old your kids are. Uh, one and a half and three and a half. Oh, geez. It's, it's they're the best and i love that's also part of the i don't want, want to call it stress but you love them so much yeah that the i can't ex- like the way it pulls at your heart yeah. is just so intense so every yeah. day is this intense like jesus i fucking love yes. you but <laughs> you know what i mean like yes, it's, in, it's intense it's man. intense so and then it's then i would get anxiety on top of it, like fuck nothing can happen i know i know all the yeah. shit that can happen and i i obsess about it and i gotta you know i gotta work so it's like oh my god why am i am i absentee Mm -hmm. you just want to be with them they're so yeah regardless last night don't let you know my kids like you weren't around it's like well then it's too late they're not gonna let you know now that's the problem right i know i know i know know. anyway the uh here's the dumb plan dumb plan we watch this fucked up horror movie are you into horror movies not really okay you watch it with the kids no okay good i didn't want to watch it with me this is like a ptsd style <laughs> terrifier too oh my god it's disgusting anyway aaron goes to bed and i'm like i'll just you know what she's gonna get up with the kids tomorrow morning great i'm gonna i'm just gonna uh play some video games so i stayed up late making the assumption i don't know what what i was thinking i'm like yeah, i'll be able to sleep in and then it like you know not with the kids six. Oh yeah it's six it just sounds like texas chainsaw massacre yeah. <laughs> upstairs i don't know what's happening just you know like just this scream of like <laughs> anguish coming from the youngest one he's totally fine because he you didn't know. get his french toast or something yeah well, i don't know what <laughs> i don't know so yeah i'm exhausted right now you notice that so that's that's what's happening so how long have you been married now i've been married uh almost five years five years so i think you were just getting married probably the last that's time right. you did this show maybe four years ago and then i think the kids are new since you've last done this show i think you probably did this three four that's years right ago. yeah, yeah. And, and also what's come in since we last were together on this show, I think, was Midnight Gospel. Yes. Yeah. And I think so. so talk to people about that. Because I, I that show, people 
fucking love that show. And I do too. Talk about it. Well, uh, how did it happen? What was it? You know, it, it, yeah, it was so. Um, you know, one day I get this email from Pendleton Ward, who I only knew as the creator of Adventure Time, one of the greatest animated series of all time. And uh, I just started pod like podcasting was still new. This was still when podcasting was relatively new. Like I don't I like uh, so back then I don't think anybody really understood the effect of podcasting that you could it you would uh you know, you're putting stuff out there. You don't know who's listening. You don't know who's... Well, I, you know, your podcast was pretty successful pretty early, right? Really not compared to, like, the Joe way podcasts are now. Well, but I remember you... First, I love doing your podcast. I ran into a lot of people that liked your podcast. And this was yeah. earlier than you doing it. Okay. See, that you and me being friends even. You know okay. what I mean? I never would have, like, when I started podcasting, I wouldn't have been like, one day you're going to be friends with Dr. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have thought that. Like, yeah. we just thought it was cool. It was a fun way to um, have conversations. Yeah. So I'm talking early, early days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I got an email from Penn Ward being like, hey, I really like your podcast. And I was just like, there, that's a troll. There's no way the creator of Adventure Time is listening to my podcast. It was just a real mind blowing moment. And then. You know, did you follow up to ask him to come on the podcast? We got to be or? friends. Oh my and, gosh! You know, back then, man, I, I was like dead broke. I'd, you know, I'd had a podcast with Natasha Legero called The Lavender Hour. That's when I started podcasting. We broke up. I don't know why. It's weird. Sometimes it seems like like women don't like supporting you when oh. you don't have a job. Have you ever noticed that? Is that I, in medical I, stuff? No, is there, there something there are, out there? There is something about what makes women attractive to men that includes not being dependent on them. Right. It's yeah. not like when you tell them that like, maybe you're going to start making fountains to make money. <laughs> Was maybe that your plan at the time? Yeah. Oh. Maybe I'll be a fountain builder. <laughs> I'll start <laughs> selling cool <laughs> fountains. So, uh, and did she get married soon after that? Soon after that, she yeah. met Moshe and, yeah. and uh, they had the most amazing kid, and like it was a per it was perfect. Like that, that know, worked out for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, it was a great move. <laughs> great move. I needed it. She needed it. Okay, you know, good. What are we gonna do? What would, be, what would I be doing right now? Like, imagine if my fountain business had taken off. <laughs> What kind of weird life would I be what in right now? What kind of fountain? Like the little fountains you get like at a Zen flower true, shop? True. Or you're going to build like the Trevi, Trevi fountain, like a big mo you know, monuments. I was, you know, like <laughs> how depression works, right? Like, yeah. you know, like you're not, you're not in therapy. You need yes. to be in therapy. Yes. You've got all this unacknowledged shit. You're in a kind of stupor. You get grandiose. You, you get gr grandiose, <laughs> but crazy, but you just want to sleep. It was just yeah. a whole maelstrom of bad news, basically. <laughs> and, and so, uh, yeah, so I, basically, I, I, start, I, I started my own podcast, The yeah. Duncan Trussell Family Hour, yeah. and then started doing that, taking it seriously. Then Penn reached out to me. So and, and Natasha, you're broken up. You're doing the podcast. Doing Penn the, reaches Penn out. reaches okay, out. That's the and at some point, he's like, I have an idea for how to turn, maybe do the podcast as a cartoon. Right in the early days. Early day. This was pretty early. Was, had he been on the podcast or he just was a fan? I think he came on the podcast with Jesse Moynihan, who ended up doing some of the art, a lot of the art for the Midnight Gospel. So, Did you talk about it when he was a guest on the podcast? No. Like, hey, we, okay. He invited me out to coffee. Uh. and Because Adventure Time had just ended or he'd left Adventure Time. I don't remember. And we're at coffee. And somewhere as we're talking... May, probably something I, I don't know if it was something I did or he just at some point he's just you know I just think I'm too busy to really do this he's so it was so it was like I tried to not cry you know what I mean because like I'm making money selling posters at that time I'm going down to Costco and printing posters that I'm mailing out to sell I'm subletting a place so um, yeah it was it was it, I remember walking to my car like well it's okay it's okay we'll just try to sell some more posters but yeah then uh years later he reaches out to me he's like I think I'm ready to do that now and so that is did, did he explain to you what his idea was when the old in the first incarnation kind of but not really okay. like he's a genius and I, I, I know i know and i remember when you pitched it to me you 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 had trouble describing it just just you'll see when you get here kind of that thing. Yeah, yeah right and then i had the experience of 
didn't know who the guy was in the booth directing me and was like, holy yeah. shit, who is that? That yeah. guy knows exactly what he's doing. I can't believe how yeah. fucking, I mean, targeted he was. I, I know, it's and so I, wild. I, and I ran into him in the parking lot. We'll keep going, your part. We'll talk about our Well, pantry. that's pretty much it. Like, well, we, how does he pitch it to you? Because it, it's so odd. Well, we, st we started talking about it. Like, how would we do it? Like, he, like, you know, he had, like... It popped into his head, like what happens if we like make the dialogue for the podcast? Um, but but I'm imagining if somebody pitched that to me, I would imagine sort of us as cartoon characters, sort of sitting talking. That's it. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's what, not what it was. No, that's yeah. what the genius was like. Yeah, what if we do the dialogue? They're having the conversations, but it's like an adventure, or they're in some weird world, or so you we're going to take the podcast dialogue, attach it to. Uh, like an know, adventure an adventure and who who two two things How, who came up with the character right yeah and the whole time machine or whatever the hell that vagina was <laughs> and and, and yeah. then how do you who went from the conversation to seeing the adventure because i i would never in a million years have seen what he drew well that well that was us just talking and yeah. I, you know i've always been really interested you in, and him talking yes yeah I've been into simulation theory, you know, yeah. it's so cool. It's such a fun yeah. like thought experiment. Yeah. So the idea of someone going into a simulator to harvest novelty, like that, it, it, it was just us like bouncing ideas. And yeah. then he would start, he would sketch and draw. He started drawing the world of the chromatic ribbon. And, you know, it, it was just this wonderful collaboration uh. and not just with him, I mean, with, ev with so many uh, just geniuses at uh, Titmouse, the animation studio that did it. And so, you know, it just sort of grew, like it grew out of all of these minds. They just know what they're doing. They know what they're doing and Pendleton knows how to bring people together, harmonize them. And create. And create. And create in a way that moves forward and, and, and yeah, bears fruit. That's it. And empower, like he's so good at empowering people around him and like, you know, letting you you know he's he like encouraged me to do those weird songs in in every episode i never would have done that in a million years but he like brings that out of people yeah, he's like yeah. oh, why don't you do that and he's so that's yeah. a wonderful quality i, I wrote is. a book once with judith regan who is a famous editor and that's how i felt talking to her like she was just yeah. bringing stuff out of me i was like I, I don't know what she's doing but i'm responding that yeah that is one of the great Talents, superpower. It's a superpower. Well, yeah, city. Like yeah. in uh, one of the words for it is a city. Like uh, you know, people talk about if you meditate long enough, mm. you hear a lot of bullshit. Like, oh, maybe you can levitate or walk through walls or turn into a rainbow or stuff like that. Yeah. But really, uh, it doesn't have to be through meditation. But really, there's like it has better to be powers. Powerful hallucinogens, I suspect. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> you definitely might think you're walking through a wall. Until, right. like, you, you wake up with a black eye. But the, 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 but the, the, like, if you think about those things that you hear about or you watch in the Kung Fu movies, cool, whatever. But there's actually more, uh, I think, pragmatic ways that people can become magical, yes. which is just what you're talking about yes. there, where like you suddenly you're around someone and somehow you feel funnier or, you, you know, there's a resonance happening yes. or something. They, they, they know how to bring good stuff out of you. Sadly, it works the opposite way too. People doesn't can it? suck it, suck it the other direction, yeah. suck shit out of you. Yeah. If you make me think about when I was a kid, I had I've never ever talked about this. I had this fantasy that I wanted to. Um, whenever we traveled as a family, like I was like three or four years old, I wanted to be able to zap my house and backyard to wherever I was traveling. Wow, cool. And my dad would say to me because I, I had this fully formed idea i was like five years old and my dad would say well just think really hard about it. maybe you'll figure it out wow uh, yeah and i realized as an adult i recreated that a little bit by we we, we keep an apartment here and there those are my homes I, wow. I i didn't it was not the way i thought about it happening but it was the same feeling that and is the same so result cool. creatively it's the same thing it's just you don't always it doesn't always go the way you think it's going to go, but it ends up somewhere almost richer. Okay, so let's talk about this yeah. idea five-year-old Drew had yeah. because it's brilliant. Yeah, and that actually, um, that's enlightenment. Like what you're talking about there is actually 
Like if you take it one step deeper, yeah. what you want is the feeling of being home. Yes, correct. But you want that wherever you go. Correct. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Now I know that. Yeah, that's what you're, that's, that's what, what I wanted. I, didn't really, I kind of wanted my backyard with me wherever I go, but as an adult, I didn't. I just wanted the home. That's it. Home. And that's yeah. what every addict wants. Like if, like, I remember a long time ago when I was flirting with, opioids we've talked about this where i'm like you know vicodin isn't that bad you know and we were out, get around other people who are into pills and they're like you should try it with red wine <laughs> you get like pill head advice yeah. you know a great oh, yeah. you know noir with vicodin it's my favorite night you don't know it's acetaminophen it's just like you're just like why not just take your liver out and just <laughs> fucking hammer it on the table instead but back in those days uh i can't remember like being on after I got my ball chopped off from cancer, being on Vicodin and thinking like, my God, I feel like I'm home. I feel like I'm warming my hands and like some Some people will describe it also being warm warm blanket in mother's arms. Yes! Like being back in mother's arms. So I think synthetically, like you're you're like, it's like you're getting a synthetic replication of a potential way to be that you don't yeah. need anything for yeah but but somehow the opioids they get you close to it yep. or they cannabis does that for some people too cannabis does that too yeah yeah uh, but uh yeah so that thing you're talking about this is a I, i've been kicking this idea around a lot lately because i get into this buddhist shit i'm always reading it and like uh it, it, the the way this one teacher puts it chogim chumper ribeshe is okay you come home at the end of the day you've worked your ass off you sit down on the couch and you go, ah, yeah. that. Yeah. What if you could expand that? Yeah. Wherever you go. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Now that do you think that's a possibility? I I kind of think I've weirdly done something like that with yeah. my life. I kind of feel that way here. I feel that way with you. I feel that way in certain relationships I cultivate, and I and I feel that way. You know, we're moving around a lot, me and my wife. Yeah. And and where we go, I I, I make sure that I've created that that makes me kind of feel that way. I yeah. mean, like New York City now is like one of those places for me. It's like that's home. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's that. And and, and there, but it, really a key for me component of it is the creative outlet or the creative element. Like you have to create these things, right? You have to create the relationship. You have to create stuff like this and engage. You know, there, there's there's a very deeply creative process to really, at least for me, feeling like that. All right. I agree. I yeah. mean, I'm still in that place too. Yeah. But what do you think about the idea that you actually don't have to rearrange external phenomena to Oh, get you should be like carried around your heart kind of thing? Well, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's the idea that like, in fact- Yeah. Per, e, e, per, yes. Yes. You should. I mean, I could see where that'd be very appealing and I strangely don't want that. <laughs> Why? You know, I, I, because I get it this other way. Right. And, and I find it more in, like meaningful to me. More, it, it's yeah. more invigorating. It, 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 yeah, I feel like the other would be just about me and the other is about leading a certain kind of life. Well. Where, where I'm engaged. Right. You know, I, look, we're, it's like talking about like uh, trigonometry or That's right. is that some kind of high math. I have, yeah. I have no idea. We don't know what we're talking about, really. I, I don't know what and I, I, we're also talking about pref tastes, you know, like preference. Yeah, preferences. Well, this is the, I can't remember the name of it. There's some famous Zen text. The, the beginning of it goes something along the lines of the great way is not difficult for they who hold no preference. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and this holiday season, do something for a special person in your life. You, give yourself a gift to raise your spirits, not just for the day, but for the whole season, for the whole year. Holidays can be a tough time between managing family dynamics, racing from event to event, braving the cold, the shorter, darker weather, shorter days, normal to feel down, right? Having someone to talk to you about how you're feeling and what you can do about it is truly a gift. And look, there's no longer any excuse. With all of it online at BetterHelp, no waiting rooms. You can switch therapists. There's no excuses any longer. And of course, as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists. As I said, it's 100% online and it is affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist, no excuses. 
Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash after dark. That is betterhelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash after dark. This holiday season, if you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, culture, give the gift of Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun, easy, bite-sized language lessons, you will finally be able to discover the wonder that comes with learning a new language. I was just in Portugal. My wife and I worked with Portuguese with Babbel, and I've been preoccupied with languages lately. It grows your brain. It makes you feel better. It's like... I don't know. I, I, and by the way, if you're going to go visit another country and you don't learn their language, shame on you. And with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. There's no excuses. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plan, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German, plus Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. And it really does work. Susan's French accent went from silly to not so bad. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash drew. That's babbel.com slash drew for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No preference. Yeah. Because like all of society is defined by preference. Well, and that sort of sounds like the Zen stuff, letting go, letting go of all desire. All, all yeah. You, let it, yeah, yeah. It's it's like pre, it's preference. You ever yeah. you know like the more the more pre things you the more intense you are regarding like the food you order, mm. the more intense you are regarding like what needs to be around you. Yeah. The more you're going to suffer, I just Th that's, statistically. That's the that's the, pre that's the presumption of the of those sorts of philosophies. Yeah. But we started this whole thing talking about your intense love for your kids. They would have you let go of that too a little bit. You know what I mean? Actually, not. No. This is a misconception. Okay. Thank God, because yeah. then it would just be some kind of like nihilistic yeah. shit religion, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. It's <clears throat> no. I, the I, the premise. Um, and again, different lineages of yeah. Buddhism, so they all have different takes on yeah. it. A, a very confusing word that pops up a lot and it is emptiness. Mm. And so people hear that, especially in the West, we don't like empty. We don't like We that. like full. Yes. Full gas tank, full coffee, full bank account, full. So it's not really, so the word could be confusing here, but um, but we do like space. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, it's nice to have a lot of space. So that's yeah. a better way to think about it in terms of like vastness. Uh, like when you're looking out of the ocean and you go, oh wow, this oh. is that's that's a better way to think of the the emptiness idea. But the the emptiness, it's not like it's it's not dead. It's filled with love. So when you're with your kids and you're feeling that thing, it's not the kids that are generating it. It's that in that connection, you're opening up to what you actually are. Meaning that, in fact, the whole point of letting go of preference is the more you let go of preference, the more you have that. Yes. I, I like that because I've always felt that real spirituality is interpersonal. I feel like a big piece of it is. Yes. Yeah. Pendle can make a great cartoon out of this, what we're just talking about. <laughs> so, uh, so why doesn't he do it? Why did the cartoon get dropped? Uh, Why is Netflix from doing Netflix? That? Yes. Well, he needs to do it again. Or you he know, needs to take it somewhere else. Netflix, their business uh, model is. I, I mean, I, I think this is my, I speculate. I mean, yeah. the, the thing is like, I, I have no, I can't have real bitterness about it because the uh, executives I worked with were so awesome and they were like, they let us make the show. And um, But I think the business model for Netflix is do a lot of- First uh, run First stuff. runs, hit the Stranger Things yeah. and then make, pour the money into that. So they have to really hit in order for them to be recurrences. Exactly. So let's tell them more about how this came to be. So you're developing this thing, because it's still not clear to me how our conversation on your podcast became the adventure that he envisioned, you know, with the little president and all this stuff. The Did, zombies. The zombies. Is that something you were thinking about? Is no, that... I'm pretty sure he came up with President Dr. Drew. I'm pretty sure he came up with that. And... uh yeah, he did. He did. You know what he did? He drew a... Okay, yeah, now I remember. So he... We pitched it with an animatic, you know, just a shitty little, like, uh, uh, low-res line drawing. Off the podcast, still. Off the podcast. You so know, the audio was the podcast. And he, then, so he grabs, yeah. he grabs our episode, 
He puts the audio into the animatic. He draws a little President Dr. Drew fighting zombies with us talking on the rooftop of the White House. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> we bring it in, show it to them as proof of concept, and they everyone laughed. It's funny. And so that's what sold it. Wow. <clears throat> along with, you know, Pendleton being involved. And but then that was like three minutes. The animatic was three minutes. Yeah. We had to figure out a way to do that for 20 minutes yeah. of a conversation with animation. Well, and that by the way, you'd have, a, have an arc of this multi-episode thing now you had to invent That's too. That's it. So there were a lot of problems that appeared in the process of making the thing that uh, we figured, we find, by the end we figured it out. Which Christina it, was one of the voices, I'm just remembering. That's right. Yeah. Christina was one of the yeah. voices. Yeah, she was Clancy's sister. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So funny. Oh, man. It was the best. Making that was so fun. It was well, now here's the other part. So, how, how so help, explain to them how we ended up in a sound booth. So, here was just our, our audio from our podcast, but then we still needed to do some more audio. Yes. Okay. So, essentially, we, we realized that you have to glue, you have, it's like you have to pin the dialogue to the animation, or otherwise it becomes like animation with the background sound yes. of a podcast yes. so you've got to connect the conversation to, the, to what's happening you can't have zombies running around and not acknowledge there's zombies running around right right so but if you do too much of that then it distracts from the conversation yes. so it's a balancing act and so we had you come in because we needed you to react to like machine <laughs> so guns. So hey, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, I remember we were like, can we, will he say that? Will he say fuck? <laughs> Can we? And then we had to sing the song at the end. You're just singing with eight. Sing along. Don't worry about That's it. That's right. <laughs> but you got a great voice. I didn't know that <laughs> then. Oh, God. <clears throat> and But but it's the amazing thing to me was I couldn't really visualize really. We didn't see it yet, right? There was yeah. no nothing really to see. You were kind of showing me little sketches and stuff. Yeah. And and Pendleton came in and goes, no, no, I need this. This is what I need. Yep. And it was, And when I would do it, I would I would go, oh. Oh I, I can tell that that's something that's something right oh. and and i thought yeah. and i ran into him in the parking lot we went and actually did a podcast that same day i think or one of the other times i was in there and i ran into him walking across the parking lot because your podcast studio was across the parking lot remember and i just i didn't know who he was i just thought he was yeah. the guy in there directing or something and i was and i stopped him i said where did you I mean, I see how extraordinary what you do is. Right. Where did you learn this? And he was just sort of like, oh, I've just been doing it for a while. <laughs> very humble. Doing it very for, very <laughs> humble. <laughs> Super humble. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know who he was at that point. I had no idea. Yeah, he, yeah, for sure that guy is just one of a kind. Just yeah. Completely unique, amazing human. And so I'll ask again, where did the vagina come from? <laughs> that you, was Pendleton. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I mean, people, I, people can watch this now, right? Can they go on Netflix? Yeah, and it's watch? on Netflix. Right, Midnight Gospel. Go watch it. Yeah. So we're talking about the number one episode. The other episode, the other episode is seven and eight with your mom. Eight. The eight last episodes with my mom. Eight and nine. Seven and eight. Uh, it's nine it's and just ten. one episode. It's eight. I swear it was two with your mom. There was that was just one episode. There actually there was two podcasts with my mom. Oh. But there's just we only we took the audio from both. I, I see. Maybe that's where I got that in my head. Yeah, that's where I got it. Uh, Susan, head. my wife, just burst into tears during uh, that, and I've talked to many other people who had a similar reaction. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm so happy that it, that my that that got out there. You know, people. You know, this is a doctor. Like we are so like grief illiterate in our society, in our culture. Not your mom. Not my mom. And dying, no dying people become very literate in uh, dying. This uh, I've dealt with it a lot. Not and all some, of them. Some do, some don't. Your mom was on it. Well, on she did it consciously. On. Yeah, she. Did. You can Ooh. die consciously. You don't have to like. Whoa. Yeah, a great. It's like I sometimes I fantasize that like when we do die. And we realize, oh, you don't really die. This whole thing is like some kind of oh, uh, training, teaching, whatever, maybe recreational activity. But like after we die, do they like, are there shows where they're like, look at this amazing death? That was incredible. That was like a like, 10 out of 10 some, death. Like Pendleton's on the other side making cartoons out of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like we think it's such a big deal over on this side of things as you should. We don't know what's on the other side. But once it happens, it's like, wow, that's like Olympic diving. Like when like, you get right. across. Yeah, amazing, amazing <laughs> death. Well done. 
It's like so a funny. triple backflip. Oh, oh death. my god, that's funny. Anyway, so do go watch uh, Midnight Gospel. It, it, what we're talking about is this one episode where we did a podcast about essentially legalization of cannabis. Essentially, we were talking yeah. about, and then his mom did a couple of pods with Duncan where he was. It was her end of her life. That's right. And uh, she was sharing some profound, profound oh, feelings yeah. and thoughts and. And the way he animated that was also made it very intense. She died two weeks after that. Oh, man. Intense. Intense. Yeah, yeah she was right there, right mm. at the singularity. You would, you would not have known it uh, hearing her talk about it. She well, sounded robust. She sounded vital. Yeah. She well, yeah, you know, that was that you know how cancer works, man. That's how it can work sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, just all just, of a sudden, boom. Just, yeah, once Oh, so she didn't know it was two weeks before. It wasn't she like, knew. She knew it was coming. She was in hospice. Okay. She knew it was coming. Okay. She was on oxygen. Okay. But you know, also she had been um dealing with cancer for years mm. and she changed her diet. She, you know, she was really like disciplined in mm -hmm. what she was putting in her body. And uh so she was quite lucid you know she wasn't like at that point she had yet to like really start taking a lot of opiates and stuff. morphine and stuff like that so she was still like there mm -hmm. did she have pain at the end did she have, yeah just, um, at the end she had pain and the, you know we gave her she wanted morphine yeah, so we course. did that yeah of course yeah definitely but that was very close to the end when she just fell asleep I don't know where to go after thinking about her because uh, we have silliness <laughs> to talk about. Should we what? just do it? You don't know how to go into jokes from talking about my mom's death? Come on, Drew. You're an entertainer. It's, it's, it's you what, can do it's it. what you call a transition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, in, but in all ways, in all ways. Look, my mom would have, my mom, would, she was so wonderful. She wouldn't have been offended by us uh, laughing after that. I mean, she would have wanted that. Anybody, any any person who's died, I'm sure. That's no, all I they think want. she was, yeah. Well, she wanted you to thrive as much as anything. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's exact. That's every parent, right? That's every parent, right? It, it is right. Which is you're not you, you you say you know you want them to be happy, but then we sort of superimpose our shit on it, like what we think that would be. Yeah, we really, just want them to thrive, whatever that means for them. I recommend anyone out there do a podcast with your parent at some point. It doesn't have to be when they're dying, but if you can record a nice conversation with them, you'll be so happy you did it. It's you, you you'll you'll be able to go back. Hopefully, your parents will meet uh, your kids. Hopefully they'll meet your your uh, your, Did your kids. Mom kids. Meet your kid? No, oh, oh yeah, no. But at least not in this life. Yeah, but yeah. the uh, but but you know it's kind of like Superman. Remember like how he had that repository of data from his parents that he yes. could go to those crystals or yes, whatever. Yes. You know if you get a nice couple of conversations with your parents, you're gonna have that. And you when you go back and listen, it's like oh shit, she was telling me stuff based on how much she knew me and based on how dumb she knew I was at that moment. But, but, she but really... isn't, isn't it interesting to you? This is back to the thing I was saying about moving my home around, how we, we have these fantasies of these extraordinary things we would like, like a crystal that you put in your parents sort of show up. But we have things like that now if yeah. we're creative enough to pay attention. Yeah. And yeah. to really take advantage of yes, it. Yes, that's right. Which is kind of odd. I mean, kind of like extraordinary. So download your parents' brain. That's going to come soon. You'll be able to just download your parents' entire brain into your computer. That'll be annoying. That's the singularity, won't it? Isn't it? Well, you'll wish, you'll hope for the fucking singularity <laughs> when you're getting infinite texts from your immortal mom. What did you say that for? <laughs> your immortal mom. Why did you, you need to sleep more, Drew? If you had done more Midnight Gospel, what would you have done? Well. Did you have a plan? Well, yeah, because the first season to me, it felt like it was all about uh, death. And uh, uh, so I would, the second season, I wanted it to be about life. Because, uh, you know, the, like, especially now that I'm a dad and watching how gory in the most beautiful way life is, yeah. how like, you know, the, the outflow, the progenitive outflow yeah. of of organic matter into the universe is so beautiful and wild. I think and uh, Camille Paglia calls it the chthonic Dionysian soup. <laughs> chthonic. How mean, long have we been friends? <laughs> For a long time. You're just gonna drop chthonic Dionysian soup I on think me that right was her now. Way of saying it. I'm naming yeah. the third kid that. <laughs> chthonic just means like out of the swamp, and then Dionysian means out of the expressive chaos, right? Like sort of right brain stuff. 
No, yes. No, I yes. just love you, man. <laughs> you just casually said chthonic Dionysian soup. All right, let's take calls. All right, well, let's talk about someone's penis explodes on weed. <laughs> okay. Hey, Hitler. Let's <laughs> proceed from there. After learning about negative side effects from super strong weed. Oh, I had a terrible weed reaction. <laughs> you okay? We're going to be all right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to forge on. I had, I had a terrible reaction to some weed where I uh, developed like an anticholinergic delirium. I like really was... You were telling me Oof. about that. All right. Wanted to see if you could give me some insight on a similar situation. I smoked strong weed, happened to get an erection like it, too many, Benadryl. My dick was rock hard and the veins were so large I was convinced they were going to Too explode. many Benadryl? It's a story. It's a joke here. It, oh. it, it, uh, I immediately got terrified, took Damn a cold man. shower, sobered up. Is it possible I had never reaction to the particular strain that was smoking? Was the weed purchased? Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's called um, priapism. And priapism can be caused by almost any substance. It's, and so why you got priapism from weed, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Never heard of that. But uh, it's, I guess, what's happened to you. Tripping balls. Uh, when I was about four or five years old, I remember I was trying to sleep, had a psychedelic-like experience, felt unreal, thought I was going to die. So I tried to go to my parents, but I collapsed in the hallway. I was laying on the ground. I remember looking up and seeing everything getting bigger, like I was shrinking. <laughs> I could also see my uncle. I could also see myself. But when my parents came out and got me on my feet, I was back to normal. Just curious what caused that experience. Drugs? No, he's four years old. What? Four years he's old. Four-year-old should not be taking acid. Correct. Let's talk about something that no doubt is missing from your holiday routine. That is hydration. Liquid IV fuels your everyday well-being by helping you stay hydrated. One stick, you get five essential vitamins, and you're hydrating at two times faster rate than water alone. I was just in the Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan, and I was using Liquid IV. I wish I'd used more. One stick of Liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water. Again, you need solute, not just water. You need fluid. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, 5, 6, 12, and vitamin C. Three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. That's right. So it's not just what a traditional sports drink would offer you, it's more. It's made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, soy. Liquid IV is also on a mission to change the world. To date, Liquid IV has donated over 25 million servings in over 50 countries around the world. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you shop Better Hydration at liquidiv.com and use code Dr. Drew at checkout. That is 20% off anything with the code DRDREW at liquidiv.com. This is this is called a hypnagogic hallucination. Hold on, wait, I'm so sorry. I miss her. You know what? Here's what happened. You're going quick. I'm going quick. I'm trying, so I'm trying to make that transition. You saw the wheels <laughs> spinning in my head as I'm thinking like, whoa, can we make your dick hard? Correct. And I'm like going through. I'm You're like, still that. You're still I'm there. I'm like, no, yeah. definitely not priapism. But oh, I'm so sorry. Can you so read that? He again? essentially had a psychedelic like experience. When he was four. Four. Okay, he, gotcha. He had some weird, he can't Back do, on track. uncanny experience, walked down the hall to his parents, ended up on the ground, felt like he was shrinking. Oh, okay. Room was getting bitter. Parents got him on his feet. He was fine. That's a sleep, that's a sleep phenomenon. It's called hypnagogic hallucination. Okay. He was sleepwalking. He was still in REM sleep. It, it, people can can experience all kinds of sure. things. The typical thing is that the bed's going up to the ceiling or like uh, Sal from the Stern Show. That was one of his hypnagogic hallucinations. Or that somebody's lying on top of you. Yeah. And oftentimes it'll be a devil or a ghost. It's astral, but you're talking about astral projection. Well, there is also, that's something a little different actually because people can do that in an awake state sometimes. This is yeah. strictly sleep. Well, but the sleep paralysis precedes yeah, astral sleep projection. Paralysis. Sleep paralysis goes along with it. But too. to yeah. get to come out of your body, you got to go into sleep paralysis, and then you can bounce out. Well, some people with like really significant well, medic substances will have that, right? They sometimes have that experience. Rob, I don't know why you're pointing to me. Robert Anton Wilson, not Robert Anton. I'm sorry. There's a book called Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. Mm. He worked with the CIA. The CIA actually studied this shit because mm. they were like, if you can do it, yeah. let's like send let's them into spy. the Kremlin yeah, or whatever, right. right? So yeah, it's a great book. And when I was a kid, my mom had these subliminal astral projection tapes that I would listen to before going to sleep. And I woke up one morning while I was skipping school and I so I figured out if I just go out the front door and then come back up the steps quietly, she's not going to check my room. <laughs> so I'd done that. I was just laying in bed and... <laughs> Yeah, all of a sudden I woke up. I was the fan was in my face. Yeah, yeah. And I did think, oh, it's an acid flashback because in high school I did so much acid. Uh, but then I tur been. turned and looked. 
I saw myself lying in bed. I yeah. don't think it was an acid flashback because I'd been doing these astral projection yeah, yeah, tapes. So I think I pulled it off. So sometimes people that are severely dissociative, like they have lots of trauma in childhood, can sort of do that in an awake state. There's just, just, I've seen people describe that. Crazy. Let's listen to some voice messages. What do you guys have there? Hi, Dr. Jeans. Hi, Booth Boys. Um, wow, I love you guys. Uh, I wanted to call before, uh, but I guess this is the question that's going to make it happen. Um, okay. I just left a comedy show with my boyfriend, <clears throat> and I'm waiting in the car right now while he grabs us five guys. The only other context you need is that I'm a 28-year-old woman who uh, is biologically able to have multiple orgasms. Ah, good for it's her. Literally the only person I've ever heard talk about this. So I'm going to ask you, do you think people who come easily or more easily have anything in common with people who laugh easily? I saw wow. that a lot. She's and right. I don't really see a difference in, like, a guy who makes me laugh uncontrollably and a guy who makes me come uncontrollably. Um, let me know what you think. Wow. Uh, and tell Susan I say hi. Did she give Thanks. us a name? Bye. That's a great, great question. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't give name. a name. So, so I've talked to you know everybody over the years, and one thing that comes very clear becomes very clear quickly is you realize women have this sort of spectrum. I come very clear since mm-hmm. I've gotten old. That's, what is that? <laughs> it's it's that. Um, we you get your pipes are nice and clean, so it's not. That's what it means. Yeah, they may, it could be your testosterone levels too, but but usually the 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 more you're evacuating the semen, the kind of less chunky it is, less thick it is. Yeah. So good on you. Right. So 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 sh- women have this sort of spectrum where about five or ten percent of them uh, orgasm easily with intercourse, oftentimes multiple multiple times. They don't like oral sex. That group does not like oral sex. And then there's a 30, 40% that can kind of sometimes orgasm with intercourse, but reliably with the oral sex. And then there's about 50% that only with direct stimulation like oral sex cannot orgasm with intercourse. Right. She's in this group that orgasms with intercourse multiple, multiple times. They start having orgasm like at the onset of, of intercourse. Well, then yeah. we have something in common. So, <laughs> but she can keep going, <laughs> keep, keep producing. And uh, it's really funny. And, and what she's asking, she was saying that her, she associates it with somehow the, the laughter, like, like a guy that makes her laugh repeatedly yeah. is sim- some similarity. And I have noticed, I can, I can tell from the laugh whether or not it's a woman that is multi-orgasmic. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I used to do it all the time with my cat's but I just go, that one, I just can tell how she laughed, I can just tell. And it is kind of an easy, giggly kind of laugh. It's hard to describe, I know it when I hear it. But she, if she just laughed for us, I kind of showed it to wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. You Isn't can that weird? do like what truffle pigs do for yes, truffles. Yes, I can, you do, can for do for multi-orgasms. Wow. Yes, yes. I am the truffle orgasm pig. That is incredible. That's <laughs> yeah, weird. Wait, the implication here is this. Theoretically, mm. if this is something you're picking up, and we actually did a study, which would yep. be a very fun study it to do. It would be fun, yes. That means that we could train an AI. There could be an app. To pick up yeah. on your phone, you where easily. you could like just record yep. the laughter. Go, Is that one or not? Is wow! That... Yes, I like that. That world's coming. Speaking of being creative, wow! Because I know, man, they're gonna they're gonna like <laughs> be searching the environment. You hey, should hey, edit hey, this hey, out of the really, park. really the great the great the great technological environment is. From the stage in an audience, could you hear that laugh out of the audience and pick the one and just go, "Hey, you." Augmented reality goggles. It puts like a weird symbol over their head. Incredible. So and the other, they have another thing too. Is if they they um, these women often it's so easy and so automatic for them. They feel sort of as though their other peers that don't orgasm, but then of course just haven't figured it out yet. They'll always say, like, you just need to figure it out. Like, oh, that know, sucks. It's a different biology. It's a different. Thing. Also, that type of woman, they shit their pants more. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. We'll have to get a little follow-up from this young lady to see if uh, that's part of the deal. So, and you're proud of yourself. Me? <laughs> yes. What? It's science. Okay. It's stu- I did this study. I did this study. <laughs> I did this study in college. It in was college, my ma- Yeah, I did. It was your thesis. Yeah. All right, give me another one. 
Hey, Hitler, it's me, Joe. Why I'm did I'm calling. sorry? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Because I have a question about a very rare condition that I was just diagnosed with. You better get the I Hey Hitler video handy. In my scrotal region. Yeah. Um, that I assumed was the big one, uh, so I avoided it for two years. That was cancer. Ooh. I got an ultrasound after getting health insurance finally, and it turns out that the lump is a third testicle. Uh, really? I was wow. born with polyorchidism. Um, wow. So my question is, should I have this testicle removed? From what Send I it to me. There's a pretty significant <laughs> increase. Duncan's in down one. Cancer. Uh, just doing the numbers. Sounds like 50%. Uh, so I, uh, should I leave it alone? Should I get screened more regularly? Um, thank you very much, Dr. Drew. Okay, you bet buddy. I'm coming up in May. Okay, so I have never seen that. That's a really super rare thing. Usually, when people say they have a third nut, they're talking about either a hernia or a yeah. spermatocele or a varicocele or something in there. Actual third nut. I'm used to thinking about that something being not fully descended, and I wonder if that's where the cancer risk comes from. But if the surgeons are telling you that the third testicle sitting where it is in your scrotum, which it seems like it's in the scrotum, yeah. is it at a risk for cancer, then all by all means, they got to get rid of it. Yeah, get yeah, it. get... And also... So tell them your story. I mean... Look, everybody, please, if you're... He's like, I waited two years. <laughs> that men do that. Don't all the time. fucking do that. If you're getting like, if your balls are, are like something's going on there, just. What happened to you? I don't know your story. I don't think. Uh, what happened to me was just like all Did of a sudden. Did you notice something? I just or? noticed that like one of my balls had gotten bigger. Okay. Classic story. And you waited right away or did you wait six months? Well, I didn't, thank God I didn't wait six months. Yeah. I might not be here if I'd waited six months. Mm. I didn't wait six months, but I did wait. Cause you yeah. know, it's a thing you're like, yeah. It'll probably go away. Yeah, You're yeah. just thinking that. But then going along with it was like a kind of awful. Like I realized I'm on a plane and I'm realizing I'm having to like adjust a lot. Like an and aching like, or something. An ache. Yeah. That fucking cancer ache. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, and then I went in. But, you know, statistically, right, you probably don't have testicular cancer. It's like relatively improbable that you have it. Meaning when you go to the doctor, you're probably going to get good news. Right. You're going to get a big relief. You're going to be like, And oh, if not, it's important to get on it and get on it quick. Exactly. Because it's curable. Get it out of your body. Yeah. But yeah, don't wait. And everyone says- How far did you, you got to the lungs, didn't it? No, it, thank oh, God, no. Stay down. It's a, I had two, it's stage 2A. Mm. Some lymph nodes were swollen. They didn't take them out to biopsy them to see if it was cancer. I don't think it was because they like, I think it maybe they were just reacting. Did you have chemo after it? <clears throat> radiation. Radiation. Mm -hmm. And even before the radiation, those lymph nodes had already gone down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but just to be safe, they're yeah. like, let's blast those fucking yeah. lymph nodes. They didn't say it like that, but yeah. they were like, let's do it. For sure. So I did that. And then I'm, I'm fine now. I'm clear. I, you know, you have to go in for tests. How long ago was that? Uh, that was 2013. It's like almost 20, 10 years ago. A long time 10 ago. 10 years yeah. is good. It's a good number. Good number, right? 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. What do you got there? I have the Hitler video if you want. Oh, to yeah. So this is where the Hitler. Sorry. Thank you, Solo. This is where the Hitler thing comes. There's a lot of things in your mom's house world that are just sort of greetings. Got it. You know, you better be come up in May. Keep them high and tight. High and tight, I know. Okay. I, the, or, hey, uh, Hitler. Tr try it out. Try it out. Home here now. These are all from gotcha. videos over the years. And this particular one was this psychotic girl that did a video blog every day to Hitler. And so she'd open every day with... Hey, Hitler. Oh right here, let's see her. Hey, Hitler. It's me, Danny. I uh, just want to let you know there are at least uh, two of my Daniacs, or at least a, a few of my Daniacs that are on the shrimp scampi boat, and, uh, like, they are, like, getting turned into lasagna. So um, I uh, need your uh, help getting a, a, a rescue boat over there, and... And uh, they uh, they really need your help so getting you rescued. Go. So uh, uh, what right? the fuck is she talking She's, about? Mm -hmm, not good. And so she opens every video with "Hi Hitler" or "Hey Hitler, how are you?" And here's my thing, and then just goes into this rambling, nonsensical stuff. Hey Hitler, <laughs> wake up. Well, she's not well. Poor thing. I feel as usual. Most of these videos make me feel bad. I do. I see another video coming up entitled "Cool Guy Loves Sex," and that one intrigues me. Let's let's show that to cool. Duncan. This is a new one for me. I'm not your average male. Uh oh. 
Hobbies and Interests and Goals, Part 11. Now, I have an interest in sex. I like sex. <laughs> I enjoy yeah. sex, and I intend to have lots of it when I end up in a relationship again. Oh. Great. Should that ever happen? Whether I'm married or not. Um, And I'm good at it. Ah. So good at it that I was once in my younger days offered to ha go work for porn industry. Oh, no. Kind of didn't work out for me. <clears throat> didn't like it. So I turned it down. But I'm good. I know I'm good. And I know I'm good because every woman I've ever slept with. All two of them? Always yeah. said to me, I won't do this. I won't do that. I won't do that. That, 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 that. But as soon as I have sex with them. That goes out the window. Then they're like, tie me up, uh, uh, paint me, paint. put chocolate syrup on me, eat ice cream off me, uh, uh, mm -mm. you know, dominate me, discipline me. You know, I don't care. I, I, I'll fuck you know, my sister. I, I want threesomes, orgies. I want to swap I, I feel partners. like I need a shower. I want you to gangbang me with your friends. I can you. I, when women have sex with me, they lose their inhibition. They forget about right and wrong when what they think is appropriate in society. And they lose their minds. They literally give in to their primal instincts and the uh, sheer pleasure of what I'm giving to them. They have fallen asleep what? because of how many organs I give them. You know... They are. They Is that want why they fell asleep? <laughs> I fall asleep just listening to this guy. Yeah, he's and like, even I'm good, how is he so boring? to be better. Yeah, how could he be so engaging why? and this boring because at the same I time? Like it when a woman is enjoying herself in the bedroom. Oh, I wish we had some women around it. to and know the difference because I would think they'd want to run out of the room screaming. Oh, when they see this yo, guy. oh, oh, yeah. Love it when she loses her mind, I'm into all kinds of freaky shit. Ah. BDSM. Role play orgies, threesome swap partners, pegging, oral sex, <laughs> painting, food, food sex. You know, Where did you get this, Zolo? Where did this come from? Painting there is nothing food. Talk. in the kink well, level. But who said it I to us? Do. Look. It wasn't one of Christina's no, 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 collations. No. All right, good. Loneliness sucks. Horniness sucks. When you're so lonely and horny, that you're shooting a video like that. Yes. You just have this, like, you're like, maybe, just maybe it's going to, like, get out there. Look at that unibrow, too. It's quite a, quite attractive. Oh, One man. solid eyebrow. I I don't I don't understand people. I really don't. When I, I, when I see something like that, I'm like, what, what do you think? How do you imagine people are going to respond to that? Here's it's, the thing. You're a handsome dude. You have no pro. You probably have never had any like moments. Bullshit! I've been lonely a lot. But like to get to that level I, where I you're never, on break. Oh no! And you're like in your car, and you're just like I got. That's deep hell level yes, loneliness. Yes. And then on top of that, you're adding all the BDSM stuff and like. No. But and you can't do the eating the ice cream out of a <laughs> pussy thing, right? It's really bad, right? It causes uh, yeast infections. Yeast infections. Like you can't yeah. do that. No. You know, but the ass you can eat it out of. Oh, good. That's good to know. I'm asking. Uh, yes, you could. Yes, you could. Uh, we we actually did that on a live show here. Uh, they hired a girl. Yes, Lola, you were there. Hired a young lady to have this guy that likes eating ass eat ice cream out of her ass. Yes. Would you need to put a guard or something up so to make sure it didn't like melt into her vagina? vagina? I'm not sure you have to be that. Just take a shower quick afterwards. You just don't want it going up into the cavity. On, on the outside, it's not going to do too much. I think it could go in there. I mean, it I could. I mean, it could. It's a theoretical thing, but I, I, I'm not that anxious about like a, it. An ass bowl or something. Wouldn't yes. that be a great thing? Like, What a, did you guys do with that uh, young lady you hired? Did you give her, put a sort of plastic bowl in there? I think, I think she, there was some sort of barrier, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I think she actually had underwear on. Ah. Yeah. So there you go. Underwear. underwear. So there you go. But that video, we can't ever, we can't show the stuff from the live show, can we? I, God, I would love to be able to no, show some of that stuff. No, unfortunately not. Is that ever going to happen? Um, Is there a way it comes off embargo one day? I mean, you, you can rent it on ymhstudios.com slash rentals. Okay. But. How dangerous is it to eat ass from a doctor's perspective? Well, it's an interesting question because in, in the world, the leading cause of infectious diseases are transmitted oral fecally. 
yeah. you know, stuff you eat, stuff that gets into the water, into the food supply, into the ground, and then it gets into the colon, and then it comes out in the feces, and it further infects the ground. Right. So worldwide, it's kind of an interesting concern, right? In this country, we don't have much of that. The sanitation is good enough that we don't have a lot of the oral fecal disease. There are some, um, but other than that, it's, you're not really hurting yourself. Great news. If you don't have to, it's good news. Go ahead. Enjoy. Great news. Oh, good. I'm so glad you pulled this up. Here is the guy. This is the guy that loves to eat ass. Uh, again, this we're exposing you to all the your mom's house sort of classics here. Got a little take from him, Dolo? Hey, how y'all doing, baby girl? Yeah. <laughs> you got that apple. <laughs> ay yeah. <ay, ay. laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it. Look at you. Y'all miss that ball? Huh? Well, guess what? I'm coming at your fat ass. <laughs> I love this it guy. doesn't matter if you got a big booty or a flat booty. I'm coming to get that booty. <laughs> yeah. And look, I want to lick them drawers. Ay-ya-ya. <laughs> lick them drawers. One love for all them beautiful women. I don't yes. give a damn where you're from. Let me put my tongue in your ass. <laughs> and let me play with that new noon. Yeah, baby. And I want your feet, too. You understand? Yes. I understand. Yeah, I look, understand. I want to dig in your booty. <laughs> Ooh, that's some kush kush. Ay, ay, ay. You call him the ay, ay, ay guy. a banana split? Oh, huh? that's right. We ended up putting a banana well, split in somebody's ass, and he ate it. Booty. Wow. Yeah. I'm Wasn't it a banana split, Solo? I got to yes, break it in yeah. You understand? And put some corn chips, smash that up there. Yeah, girl. I'm telling you, and, and put some popcorn, <laughs> some ice cream. <laughs> go, I'm going to go to lick in that, go inside your booty. ay ay Welcome I'm to your mom's house. He's this so, is a, we he's love so, his vitality, he's, right? Yeah, his enthusiasm. He's so happy. He's got living. He's living his life. He's <laughs> full. That is, a, is that an actualized human? Is that, like, we all think enlightenment looks like, you know, you're calm, you're... So, but is that what it looks like? What was like? your Zen guy's name, the guy that wrote the book about... Shogun uh, Trump or Rinpoche? I'm not sure he would actually qualify him as, as a lightened. Okay, I, maybe not enlightened. But I, I'm not sure he can, like find a way to support himself nor create a, a living environment. But we're not talking but about being able to like adhere to, to the temporary the man, norms of the man. The man. Thank the you. Man, that's right. No, I'm talking no. about like that, that man is fully himself. He like, is fully himself when it comes to licking ass. That is when he is fully himself. It seems like these old is, dental work. These old work. He's got the cool guy teeth. I think his teeth look great. I, they do look great. <laughs> sort of fit him they, they, <laughs> they sort of work for him he needs to brush his teeth more <laughs> yeah. after eating ass yeah yes yes oh my god we have not visited that one in a long time i'm so glad it makes me so happy to see him there's so many of these people that we have we watch on your mom's house that make me happy that's one yes. of those guys yes yeah, and, and i used to we used to play a lot of uh, robert paul champagne who is a guy that should we should we visit a little bit of him just to show duncan he wants sure, to be beaten and shit on and all kinds of things. And he used to make me feel real bad. real. I, I'd feel bad for him. Like, oh, what's right. he doing? But then I went and visited him in his house in uh, Upper Upper West Side, Upper East Side in Harlem. And uh, he has quite a life there in his little apartment. He's and he's he's good. He's actualized. He's actualized. Let's black see. guys who love to fuck oh, yeah. and fuck good. You've seen this guy? I've seen this guy. You're okay. a hot black guy. You want to fuck me at 23 95 if you want to move in, you can move in, but you got to fuck me. I need, I need to be fucked a lot, man. You can get free food, free rent, and everything else, man. You have a deal, man. And I was like, Robert, you scare me when you talk like that. Somebody's going to hurt you. I mean, you really want criminals in here shitting on you? Right. Oh, I'm just playing a game. I want to make everybody happy. So I'm not sure I really do. You know, I, I know what the real one's not, Robert. Lovely man. Though. Okay, let's imagine this. You go to his house, and I don't know... I don't know why or what, but you, you realize, like, I think I'm falling in love with him. It, it would take a lot. But what if that happened to you? What if, like, just all of a sudden you feel this flutter in your heart? Yeah. And you're like, I, I really am falling for this man. Would you repress that or would you, like, follow it through? You, you have to kind of take me out of my present context, you mean? Like, I don't have a wife and I'm just... No, you have a wife. You just couldn't... I'm too... I could, I'm not open to that. I'm too, I'm, my, my attachments are there. So, so but, it wouldn't but if, happen. I, I could feel a deep sense of connection to him, which I do. 
but I wouldn't feel like. But I'm that saying, kinda... if it's a thought experiment, okay. you're driving. No, I wouldn't. And go you through. hear a love, a romantic song, you start no. thinking no, about him. No, I wouldn't him. go through. Wouldn't. Would you talk to anybody about it? Would you talk to your wife and say, like, I don't know what's going on? I, I might. I might come back and go. I had this strange reaction. I had this. Yeah. I all of a sudden was in love with Robert Paul Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Would you worry that like you're having that something... a seizure <laughs> or a brain tumor? <laughs> I would worry something was dreadfully wrong, or that the two of my wife and I did get into therapy quick. <laughs> something's, a, something's a, a miss. Maybe I'm not a cl- consciously aware of it, but something's when off. love calls, love calls. Yeah, I know it does. I, I am not that person. In fact, uh, I, I do believe that these, these weird things that we get that can become love relationships, right? It, like say in our, particularly in our younger years, right? That we do go with that when you have, you can choose not to go with those feelings. Yeah. Easily. And, yeah. and when you have feelings like that, when you're an adult engaged in a real, you know, with a family and a real yeah. relationship, usually that's some sort of weird boundary problem that is activating something in you that it, 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 it was a source of guidance back when you were looking for romantic relationships, right. but now it's just some sort of remnant that gets activated. Yeah. You can easily go, <laughs> But some pass. people, do, like, <laughs> I am more, I'm like you, I, like, I'm not gonna destroy my entire no, family. fuck no. But it's weird when but you Some hear, people do that shit. Some people have two families. No, or they believe that I, I've never felt this before. It's like, no, you're, right. you're, you're a six-year-old man with a family. What are you what doing? Are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, and you can also choose not to have sex with people that that offer it up too. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you can you can prioritize your primary stuff, and way too much of the last fifty years has been like, hey, whatever you're into, man, just go with it. Just like, yeah, dude. Right. So, but yeah, that can. Re- it's just it, it hurt, I, I'm it hurts. always astounded when I hear stories. Of infidelity yes. that have been going on, like where it's like this person. How is, do they do that? How do they have the energy? Uh, I know. I feel the same way. I, I feel the energy and and just the energy to keep a separate thing going. Yeah. And imagine the guilt and shame and fear and stuff. You're like hiding this how thing. How do you live with yourself? I don't get it. Like you're too. You're like split in half. You know. Yeah. It's just so odd that that. And then that, and then you t- look at your, your spouse or whoever in the eye and are honest. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm into this. I love you. I. Ooh. Ew. It's creepy. Yeah, I feel. It makes me feel bad again for people that are like that. All right, trying not to throw up. What is that? Is that my gag couple again? No. Ah. So I'm going to video this. Uh oh. I already smelled. I already smelled <laughs> it before I got to it. Oh what, shit! What happened? My garbage can has shrimp. Oh no! Oh, no. Shrimp peelers. <laughs> <laughs> And strip in the Since Easter. No. It's gonna make me throw up. I got <laughs> My wife's like I can't even get it to the <sighs> to the road. <laughs> Stop it! Hold your breath! Uh-oh. <laughs> so, <coughs> He oh. <laughs> did it. It's uh. <laughs> oh my god, we're coming. Is it making that you long? Sw- yes, it's making me want to throw up. But he's he's doing it for <laughs> so long. It's the lip thing. I'd rather just vomit than go through all so that. He would. He could be a good trumpet player. That oh, way yeah. he's doing yeah. with his lips. He's got a good. Uh, what do they call that? I don't know. I'm for sure. I'm for sure. What 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 did he smell, Zolo? I he had shrimp in there or something. Yeah, shrimp peelings is what he's saying. Like from uh, from months ago or months something. Months ago, yeah. So rotten fish he smelled, mm-hmm. and it made him want to vomit. Mm-hmm. Doctor Drew, what is the oh. is there a name for the effect when like just seeing someone about contagion? To throw- contagion. There's certain things that are contagious to humans. Yawn. Why vomiting. Is, why? What's Look, the, wait till you wait till you get to the point where your kids start throwing up. Kids have a tendency to vomit. One will throw up, and then the other will just throw up too. What is that? What, it, is there some theory well, on why there, we do that? I don't know about theory. There's the, something in the brain called the chemoreceptor trigger zone that sort of can go off and trigger vomiting. Whoa. And I'm guessing it has some sort of, you know, again, contagion element to it. Probably developed. 
maybe because, you know, think from an evolutionary perspective, if somebody in a tribe starts vomiting because they ate something bad, everyone else wants to, you oh, know, right. get everyone else to vomit too. Okay. Right? That makes sense. That's yeah. so amazing. That's so incredible. Yeah, always think, in biology, always think, what could the evolutionary purpose of this be? Wow. And you can always come up with a kind of an interesting theory. That is trippy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Well, we feel bad for that man. What, what was his accent? Was he Australian or... He was puke. He was too vomity. I didn't his, hear the yeah, accent. It was an American accent, I think. Really? Yeah, somewhere Midwest or something. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, how about uh, why people get offended? What is this now? Hmm. This should be interesting. Why people... Oh. Uh-oh. For those of you offended or hurt by what and how I say things, consider this. Do you know why people kill each other? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because they don't know how to handle their minds. Go ahead. Bet on them. Wait, what? I'm confused. Bet on them? Is there more? That's, That's it. We gotta thing. figure it out. Wait, this is a puzzle or something. It's like a koan. What's a koan? A koan is a, uh, it's like, a, a, in, it, if you were to go into like a monastic Zen life, and you were Which, to you, not me, likely not going to happen for us this life. No. We're, mm-hmm. we're householders, but if you did, you go and meditate in these Zen temples. You're just meditating all it's day. It's the ones where they they sit for days and they smack them on the shoulders to make sure they don't fall asleep. That's exactly. Yeah. Well, you act. It's consensual. Like you actually yeah. kind of ask for it. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, Trying to like stay conscious, yeah. but yeah, basically, and it's you a, bow. You bow after they smack you with the wood. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's like a riddle. But it's an unanswerable riddle. Right, like what's the hand in one hand clapping? That's the it. One, yeah. But it's designed to get you out of your uh, everyday mind. Mm. It's designed to sort of crack you open mm. so that it like breaks that part of yourself that's attached to what you think of as truth and reality. And what's weird about them is they will ask you, and then at some point, it'll spontaneously, the answer will pop out of you. That's but, but, weird. But oftentimes, the it's a holistic kind of understanding that you often can't express in words, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's designed to All kind right. of catch that... Uh, Intuitive, if, yeah, whatever. Right, Let's exactly. see it again. Let's see if I can make sense of what he's saying. Just re- It's a quick enough that I don't mind seeing it again, if you don't mind. Because he said, what makes people kill? For those of you offended or offended. hurt by what and how I say things, <laughs> consider this. Do you know why people kill each other? Why? Because they don't know how to handle their minds... Uh-huh. Go ahead, bet on them. So I think he's just saying, I don't know what the bet on them means. I think that's sort of him being, I don't know, not clear. I think he's saying that if you're offended or hurt, get your shit together. Don't be offended or hurt. Control your control your offense and hurt. Oh! If, I, if your weak mind is offended by stuff, I say you need to control that oh okay. because you could have also i think what he's alluding to is you could have darker forces inside also that you should also control like death impulses you know murderous impulses things like that not See, a bad point i i not took it point. as a, i thought maybe it's a threat it, he's saying i can't handle my own mind uh, this is why i talk like this so you could bet that if you like are making fun of me you should watch out because like, be. i'm not as stable I did. that's what i kind of was thinking at first that's what it looked like either or i like your version way my, better. my version is a little kinder uh okay so there we go and we have another voice message by any chance before we wrap this all up hey dr Cruz, this is anthony i just have a question for you uh, my dad he got out of the emergency room after having a very he's blown in his uh, stomach lining, Uh-oh. and he went into the general hospital afterwards. And now he is delusional and aggressive; doesn't okay. remember any of his family. Okay. Very strange. Sucks. Doctors don't know what to do about it. Okay, to check his ammonia levels. Yeah. This is a patient that's been on methadone for years mm. and was off of it for two days while in the hospital. Oh and boy, was put back on. We don't know if that's the case. Mm. Um, if you know anything that could be of info, I would appreciate a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Keep buddy. It high and tight. So this is really serious stuff. Varices are like you know you have varicose veins in your leg. We well, can get them in your esophagus. Okay. When you have something called portal hypertension, which is because you have cirrhosis. So mm. he has cirrhosis. The fact that he was on methadone means that he was an opiate addict. Perhaps the cirrhosis is from hepatitis C. Okay. Or from alcohol, or both. Whatever it is, it's bad. <laughs> The fact that he became delusional three days off methadone, people can get really wild coming off high dose of methadone if they're not tapered down carefully. So it's possibly that more I'm thinking he has either, could have methadone withdrawal, 
could have alcohol withdrawal. Again, he's got cirrhosis. Maybe right. he's been drinking in addition to take his methadone. Or he just has something called hepatic encephalopathy, which is advanced liver disease again. And when mm. the when the blood when they they swallow the blood after a variceal bleed, the blood in the system that breaks down creates ammonia byproducts that then the liver can't clear, and so they get this encephalopathy. They're out of their mind. So this is a, he is definitely encephalopathic. He had a very serious bleed. Good news is these days they can go in and inject those varices and clot them. Oh, that's great. But the cirrhosis is the bigger problem. If he has hepatitis C, I don't know why he didn't have that treated. It's a curable condition now in most situations. And then the encephalopathy, get him back on the methadone, you know, get him cleared with something called lactulose. If he's in alcohol withdrawal, do not let them use Haldol. Let make sure they use short-acting benzodiazepine like Cirax. Why not Haldol? It makes them a lot worse. Uh, I've seen I've seen doctors do that. They give these people an alcohol withdrawal Haldol, and the patient starts like seizing and vibrating over the bed. I'm like, what, the, what are you doing? Why? It's terrible. Why? And it, you have to use Cirex in that Librium or Valium because the liver metabolizes Valium and Librium. And it, if you have it, that kind of cirrhosis, you're not going to metabolize Cirex? Cirex is a very short-acting benzodiazepine. It's also a character in the video game Mortal Kombat. I'm 99% really? certain. Really? Well, it's not used very much anymore, but it's a ultra-short-acting benzodiazepine that's, that's, that's renally excreted. It's not metabolized by the liver. So. Why do they take you off methadone when you go in the hospital? Can't, they should not they? have. That was a mistake. Oh, that's I what see. happened. That's, that's an error. Especially if he's on you know over 20 milligrams. I bet he's on 80 or 100, and that's not good. Not good. That is my area. That's where I used to deal with a lot, a lot of that stuff. So and, crazy and, y'all could do that. You, you are so interesting. Your mind works like that. Right? Yeah, because I've seen it a million times. And I, wow. and I worked on a unit where we took care of the very most ill people. And we had this shit all the time. This uh, is just sort of part of the deal. God, it's so scary when your body starts melting like that. Just and it's, it's so, you know, we live in a time right now where we're letting those diseases, the drug addictions, run unchecked. And people, are, it's a progressive illness and people are just dying all over the place. And because the laws on the coast, you know, particularly California, Oregon, and Washington, are like, hey, man, let them do whatever they want. Their, their brain isn't working right. You've got to help them. And we're letting them just die. You are you advocate for mental health courts, right? Yes. That's what you think yes. is the solution to I the I think problem. you've got to get them into treatment. They got to first of all, you got to create the environments for care, which we have woefully little, and then mandate it in some way, push them into those treatment centers. Because when they in two weeks when they clear, they're grateful for that. Right. They're pissed at people that left them on the street. Wait, what is the explanation? The general explanation for why that isn't happening? Why is it? It's just money? it's a religion for people that uh, don't understand, have never treated these conditions, don't understand what it is, and they. I I literally asked. I've been so tired of fighting this fight. I did a documentary on homelessness with this the Salvation Army and this woman that spearheaded the whole thing. Uh, she was talking about taking the documentary out and stuff, and she'd been in Sacramento. I just said, I'm just so tired. I mean, what is? I, I just, I just, I can't, I can't fight these people anymore. I go, what is with them? And she immediately bowed, She screamed back at me. She goes, It's a religion. It's a religion for them. They are. They you don't understand. They have. It's a religious belief, and they are in. Outer space with their understanding What's of what the this religion? is. I don't understand. Religion that. is you're free to do whatever you want, you whenever you want. You live in your best life. If doing drugs is part of it, enjoy. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's do it right in Portugal. Portugal does how to do it. Portugal was a disaster, by the way. It but, was. Oh, disaster. That was the safe shoot yes, up. So, disaster. do you think those are bad? I have no problem with people administering heroin to people. Right. If that's what, if that's how we do it to keep them safe but the disease still progresses. They will right. still die. So if you're not also moving them towards treatment, right. you are killing them, right. literally killing them. And that's what they found in Portugal, lo and behold. But the, the mental behold. health courts, it, would it be the police enforcing? Like I don't know how you do it, really. I mean, it have, I have to be some, I, I want something kind and just and, you know, uh, uh, not gentle, but but firm, but just moving people. Just say, you, hey, Come with me. <laughs> you you can't right. do this. You got to come with me. We're right. going to do this. Let's go. That's as yeah. simple as that. I, I'm surprised that I'm really surprised that, especially in California, that that is not something that is embraced by. Isn't it bizarre? It's bizarre. There doesn't seem anything really fascist about trying to get someone medical care. Well, the the really extraordinary thing is if if somebody's running around on the street with dementia, same symptoms, delusional, not making sense, hallucinating but dementia is the cause, and you don't treat them, you're guilty of a crime, elder abuse. But if the same age person with the same symptom complex is having that because of schizophrenia, get the fuck out of his life. He's doing whatever he wants, living his best life. And the dementia, here's the really fucked up part. 
The dementia, when you treat it, is inexorable. It's going to get worse. No right. The schizophrenic, if you get them early, you can prevent them from deteriorating. You let them deteriorate, they're gone for good. That's so sad. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyway, that's why I worry about all this stuff. I, I've been, you know, these are all my patients scattered all over the streets. I know how to treat this. It's not that hard, but you have to do the work. You have to, it's not easy to get people to do things that their brain doesn't want to do. I mean, yeah, it's it's such a confusing, it's so, it's always been really confusing to me. It just seems so sad to think that somebody's kid out there off yeah. their meds. Once you get off your meds yeah. long enough, yeah. you don't know what's happening anymore. Correct. You need help And then you throw in some meth and other things that you may be using, and then, it's, then that's it. And we've mm -hmm. had families up in, California is where the, really the problem is. I, I've had families up in Sacramento begging them to help us. We have money, we have a doctor, we have a bed for them. That we, we want help bringing them home and getting them care. Fuck you, get out of here. Who do you think you are? It's an adult, he's doing what he wants to do. Doesn't California have this huge budget surplus? It's not like there's not money to... There's billions of dollars, and all that's used for is to sustain people where they are. Not, doesn't ask anything of them. So you're, you're going to put them in little tents and little houses and this and that, and they will continue to die because you're doing nothing for them. Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, if you go to safeheroin.com, <laughs> use offer code DTFH, you're going to get the <laughs> safest heroin available in california dtfh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's where you go so tell people about the podcast where they can find you uh i've got a podcast called the duncan trussell family hour it's at duncantrussell.com got some uh, shows coming up i don't know when this comes out but you can always find my dates at duncantrussell.com and are you, are you doing more with the uh the puppet oh yeah i like that oh yeah that uh, and i was i was interested when you and joe rogan were talking about what you had done i started thinking about it. i thought this has it can go a lot of places. You can go a lot of places with that. Well, yeah. I mean, this we can talk about it off camera, but yeah. I do want to talk to you a little bit because the puppet does seem to like be abusing a lot of different drugs. Oh, and I have it, to work. I have to help him. Could you, would you mind? I know um, everyone always is coming at you with stuff yeah, like mean, that. I also, have, like he's got these weird sores on his ass. Oh, I was he's got the monkey pox. At, That's how you got know, the monkey pox. Look. I like to get very close with to your, yeah, your my coworkers, coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> especially when we're performing together. Yeah. Especially when the performance is him sitting in your lap. Exactly. Right, right. So yeah, please don't take it the wrong way. But yeah, if you look up anybody who's done any kind of ventriloquism, it's you. You need to know your instrument. Yes, inside and out. Mm -hmm. With that, we will leave it there. Duncan Trussell, everybody. DuncanTrussell.com, the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. Yes, sir. Check it all out. You won't be sorry. And look for his dates. Go see his comedy. We'll see you next time. Bye. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.